So Stephen, <laughs> tell me about yourself. Well, uh, what do you want to know about me? Well, I mean, the basics. I mean, tell me your name, whatever you want to know, tell people. <laughs> okay. Well, my name is uh, Stephen Morris. Mm -hmm. Everybody calls me, all my friends call me Stephen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've lived here in Union all my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a painter. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to play music. Mm -hmm. I love to read. Uh, I haven't watched TV in about six years. Mm -hmm. but I love to read and hang out in my room and meditate. And mm -hmm. I like to read old occult books. And I'm just a, a different type of person. I'm, I'm, I'm the weird one in the family. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand that. I'm probably the weird one in mine as well. So you read a lot of old occult books. Yes, Tell me about that. <clears throat> well, I started uh, studying, uh, getting deeper. You know, I was raised Christian, and uh, but in the past ten years, I've spent a lot of time studying uh, all forms of religion, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I uh, studied demonology and just uh, opened myself up to other things than mm -hmm. what I was raised. Just uh, trying to figure out. The reason why I started studying the occult and religion and demonology and Freemasonry uh, I belong to the lodge. I'm a chaplain at a lodge. So, and that and, and it turns out that's helped me in the lodge. You know, being a chaplain. You know, I, I feel like I'm a better service to people uh, because there's really nothing that you can talk to me about that's going to throw me back. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I've seen a lot and experienced a lot in the past 20 years, but it really all started for me when I started having. Uh, sleep paralysis in my mm -hmm. 20s mm -hmm. to where I was uh, I was seeing spirits gin or whatever you want to call them some people call them uh, gin you know Muslims call them gin Christians call them demons uh, Gnostics call them archons but on a regular basis I was able to see these spirits and communicate with them. Mm -hmm. Not at will. <clears throat> I have no control over this. When it happens, um, it just happens. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be ten times a month, or I could go one year and not have nothing happen. How old were you when you first had this this experience? <clears throat> well, my first real spiritual experience and out-of-body experience happened when I was seven years old. Uh, my grandfather was having a heart attack in the backyard mm -hmm. and I was asleep on the couch in the house and I uh, I thought it, when it was happening that I was awake. I was able to look around the room, I could see the TV playing uh, but I lifted up out of my body, I went down the hallway of the house that we lived in, and I was met by his spirit, and, and I could see his spirit standing at the end of the hallway, and when I seen him, his spirit went out the window, and I went back into my body exactly the way I traveled out of it, in reverse, like room. Like when you rewind a song on a tape or mm -hmm. rewind a video, that's how I went back into my body. And that was the first time, <coughs> excuse me, that I had a an out of body, uh, a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was when I was seven. And that was a good experience because when I came back into my body, I jumped up off the couch and I ran into the backyard. And sure enough, my grandfather was laying there unconscious, 
he'd had a massive heart attack. And I jumped on my bicycle and went to my aunt's next door and she called an ambulance and uh, and they came in time to save him. He had a, yeah, he had a, a, a triple yeah. bypass in Atlanta. But mm -hmm. if I hadn't had that experience, you know, me being asleep on the, on the couch, he could have laid out there and died right. because it was just me and him at home when it happened. Right. So. Have you ever had any experiences, you know, seeing things in the spirit world that that were frightening? Yes, yes. In my 20s, <clears throat> in my early 20s is when I started having the sleep paralysis, is what I call it, you know. From my research, because there's hundreds of thousands of people on the planet in all cultures and all religions and all places of the on earth that have the experience of sleep paralysis and uh, you know back when it first started happening to me you couldn't get on a computer and find somebody mm -hmm. uh, when it first happened to me I had went and talked to a preacher at a church and uh, and it was an awful experience. I mean, uh, I cried and opened up to him, told him what it was I was going through. I thought that, you know, I would get some help from him. Because, I mean, I was, you know, I've heard him preach about the devil and demons. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I was a member of his church, I was a musician. I was the bass player on the praise team at the time. You know, when I told him what I was experiencing, he, I mean, he pretty much mocked me and uh, laughed at me. And, you know, it was like, it must be mental health or or his question was, are you on drugs? <clears throat> and uh, I knew then that uh, I need to be careful about who I told Right. These, you know, who I told about these experiences, because with my family too, you know, they mm -hmm. just, you know, they know me as Stevie. I guess just like that Bible verse, you know, Jesus said, "A prophet has no honor in his own house." You know, uh, the people you live around and, and you deal with on a daily basis are, are likely not to be able to uh, relate to you mm -hmm. on stuff like this, because they have a way that they perceive you. It must have been extremely traumatizing and very disconcerting to have someone who you <clears throat> looked up to and admired and and thought of as a spiritual guide to betray you and and your family not being supportive. Mm. How have you dealt with that? Well, you know, in my twenties, I you know turned it, it was so bad and it started happening so much I don't know you know I know that looking back on it I know why things happened what they did in some circumstances but <clears throat> I turned to you know drugs and alcohol and party life you know I just my way of dealing with it at that point was I just didn't want to feel mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. And if I was high or drunk or, you know, even using sex, being with, you know, just being out there mm -hmm. self-medicating was a way that I tried to cope with all this because I, I it, there's a lot of times I felt like I was crazy, that maybe I was mental health. Mm -hmm. Because it, the way it started and, and, and it progressed and progressed, you know, it got crazier. I mean... And it, it, it's true, you know, <coughs> truth is stranger than fiction. It is, it is. And uh, I'm fearful for people in this world because the things that are really true have been demonized so much that, you know, people would rather believe a lie. You know, it mm -hmm. helps, you know, I guess bliss. You know, ignorance is bliss in a lot of cases. But, but that's not very realistic, is it? No. And a lot of times, and I imagine with the, with some of your experiences, 
had you continued down the road of drug abuse or denial or or redefining that it probably would have been spiritually damaging for you and possibly even physically dangerous is that correct yes I mean I had got I've had low points to where I tried to take my life mm -hmm. you know but uh, and that's when it even got stranger Mm -hmm. because when I really tried to commit suicide and it didn't happen and I don't even want to even tell people what really happened that day because it was it was purely spiritual mm -hmm. I mean it's a miracle that I'm sitting here today it's a miracle because um, I, I feel like an angel saved me you know mm -hmm. uh, there's a reason for me being here and I'm trying to find out what it is just like any other person that's on this path. There's mm -hmm. a lot of good people in this world who know the truth and they experience things like this. They're trying to figure out, you know, what what is really going on? Mm -hmm. You know, what is all the secrecy about? You know, why is it when you bring up certain things, it's shot down immediately is not being possible? Um, but to give you kind of an idea of uh, the first thing that I seen that was scary to me when it first happened and now these things don't scare me I just think it's a part of nature uh, I believe that you know demons have their place in this universe mm -hmm. you know that we, we're all living under divine providence uh, and natural law and certain things we do in our everyday life, well, uh, you can, things you eat, things you believe, things you put into your body uh, is what opens doors to these energies. I like to look at the spiritual realm and the esoteric is uh, we're dealing with energy, you mm -hmm. know. That simplifies it for me. I don't like to get into all the names because when, when you really try to understand it, you know you're dealing with energy. And, and you have all the control over this energy because we're the conduit for right. this realm. And we are energy ourselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but my first experience uh, where I seen one of these entities face to face uh, was at my mother's house. I had spent the night because I had a real bad earache. And, uh, and I seen this, as I was laying on the bed, I was looking at the alarm clock. And uh, when you have an episode of sleep paralysis, it'll always happen when you're going into sleep or when you're coming out of sleep. Mm -hmm. So if you, uh, that like when you doze off and they call it twilight, that's the moment right before you go into deep sleep. Um, I, my eyes just flickered a little bit looking at the clock and I kind of dozed off. And then that's when I seen that spirit come up out of the floor. It looked like a grim reaper. Uh, it said my name and it called me by the name that my family uses mm -hmm. Stevie not Steven and when it came out of the floor it came up at the foot of my bed and it was like it just crawled over on my chest and got right in my face and I couldn't breathe I couldn't speak it felt like a thousand pounds of weight mm -hmm. <clears throat> it feels like you're in a room full of magnets and you're the only metal <laughs> you know, it, it the energy it just it pulls you. There's nothing you can do. Uh, I don't think these uh, spirits can be killed, or their power is it's unexplainable, really, mm -hmm. how much power they have. So these that particular experience that you had, I'm sure it was extremely terrifying. Um, how do you nowadays cope with these experiences? 
when I have them now, uh, I just relax. Mm -hmm. Because uh, over the years, I figured out that you you can't move them. Right. You're you're not going to win physically. <clears throat> and I know there are certain prayers and things that I've read that has helped. Mm -hmm. Even when I couldn't speak these prayers, if I thought them, if I could just think these prayers, I could make them go away. Right. And I'm not trying to to bring religion into it to say that, you know, that's what's going to help you if you're going through things like this. Because in a lot of ways, religion has, has made it worse. Uh, <clears throat> I want to find the real Jesus. You know, if I want to help somebody, I want to help him find the real answer, the real truth. And it's hard to find because in my situation, experiencing these things, you know, I've really got deep into religion and church, but and I've had preachers pray for me, and, and I've had people who were sincere try to help me mm -hmm. that did believe me. Not all all Christians didn't reject me like that, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> but the people who did want to help me, even they couldn't help me. Right. Even the ones who really wanted to help me. Do you think that that the solution to all of these issues lies in religion <clears throat> or where do you think that people could go for answers about true spirituality all religions talk about these entities in their sacred white writings you know <clears throat> in Islam you can you know read the Quran mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can read about the jinn and in some cases in, in that religion you know jinn are not always good and they're not always bad but in the Christian religion demons are always bad um, and I that's what helped and that's what got me started into Freemasonry <clears throat> I thought that if I could you know learn because something about Freemasonry always stood out to me you know and that's when things really got strange, stranger for me. Is I started trying to help myself. I started fasting a lot mm -hmm. because, and praying a lot, and meditating a lot because I got to the place where you know what I know. Even these religions and religious people, they really mean well. And they're trying to help me, but nothing's working, you know. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. When nothing's working, you got to try to find something that works. Right. So what helped me is everything started to change for me. And everything's good in my life now, you know. Uh, is when I, uh, I got into Freemasonry and just took off with it. I met someone that helped me get into the lodge and and for 18 straight months all I did was learn those degrees. Mm -hmm. I went from the first to the 32nd just trying to soak it up like a sponge. So <coughs> do you think that Freemasonry has <coughs> given you some sort of peace and, and been able to channel some of that energy that you have what has it done for you look when I got into Freemasonry I found ran into the same problem that I did in religion 99% of Freemasons that you know we're around mm -hmm. you know we know a lot of Masons Masons don't talk about this stuff mm -hmm. either Right. You think when you join in the lodge that uh, you're going to be able to be involved and you're going to learn more about esoteric stuff and spiritualism, mm -hmm. but the truth is you're not. Right. <laughs> you know, the ceremonies and the rituals in Freemasonry are good teachers in mm -hmm. themselves, the symbols. 
And that will help a person a lot in their spiritual lives. Um, but you won't meet people in Freemasonry that can talk about stuff like this because they, they're not they're not there. Uh, you know, all this stuff you see on YouTube about free and accepted Masons being involved in a dark cult is is a bunch of sensationalism. It's, mm -hmm. it's fake. It, it's not true. It don't exist. I mean, I can't. <laughs> I'm worried that I'll get thrown out of the lodge for asking questions I ask sometimes because mm -hmm. most people in the lodge are Christians, you know. You know, they're just good people, but <clears throat> you will run across a few though here and there that know about this stuff and mm -hmm. experienced it. Something's going on, you know. I want to go back to a point that you brought up earlier about <clears throat> finding out the truth of things. You know, the old adage is the truth will set you free. Do you think that people have a natural aversion for for the desire for true freedom? What do you think it is in our culture and our society today that people seem to want to be enslaved rather than free? <clears throat> because it's the way things are is the easiest way, mm -hmm. you know. The path to truth is is very narrow. It's, you know, Jesus talked about the straight and narrow. And, you know, in Freemasonry, you have the myth of uh, Hiram Abyss being murdered because of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And in the Christian religion, you know, the Pharisees accused Jesus of being a witch and that all his miracles he he done by the power of Beelzebub. So even in the Christian religion, you know, you could be killed or murdered for the knowledge you possess. Uh, people don't like the thought of somebody having the upper hand on them because they know something that they don't know. You mm -hmm. know. And that you know you know, worst case scenario, best case scenario is how I look at a lot of this stuff. But the truth is displayed in Freemason Freemasonry in the symbols. Every to me, this is my opinion, and from what I've been through and my interactions with the spirit realm, I believe with all my heart that all the world's religions stand outside the door of Freemasonry. And Freemasonry, the symbology of Freemasonry teaches you, it displays the real truth of this mm -hmm. reality. You know, from the checkered floor, the white and black, the duality, that's even in electricity, the positive and negative charge that we all have, you know, uh, even it's the human body and the symbols of Freemasonry are alike, you know, the right and the left. I believe that we all have the devil in us mm -hmm. and we all have Jesus in us. And it's the balancing out of those energies is where we find the straight and narrow. Right. When you talk about Jesus and you talk about the devils, you're talking about good and evil, correct? Good and evil. Okay. So having that sense of duality that we are partially good or partially evil, do you what do you think tips the balance? <clears throat> well, I believe that like with these GNs in a lot of ways, they were helping me find balance mm -hmm. because I had gotten too far to the left, so to speak, because I was abused as a child. Uh, I was raised in a lot of negative energy. And when you expose a child to low frequencies, and dark energy when they're small, 
then you, you cause your children to be off balance. Mm-hmm. And so I was, I was off balance, and I believe that these gin or spirits. They come to all of us. A lot of things that happen in your life are just spirits trying to get you balanced back out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the real Jesus and the real devil is, those are personifications of energies that exist in this universe. And this universe, divine providence, will always balance you out. It's like the, the Georgia State Seal, you see, the three columns one in the middle and you see the words wisdom and moderation and you see the the justice lady justice holding the scales you see that in freemasonry a lot you see that in the courtrooms when we go to court you'll see lady justice holding the scales and in those symbols those symbols show you that in this world, in this reality that we live in, that balance always has to be maintained. Right. And you're never going to find truth until you find balance. Mm -hmm. Uh, And balance, and it's displayed in like the crucifixion of Jesus. You see the three crosses and he's in the middle. He's always in the middle. Uh, that's perfect balance, you mm-hmm. know. You had the one thief that wouldn't repent, the one thief that would. Mm-hmm. And you had Jesus in the middle, and Jesus in, in the Christian religion, Jesus always talks about the straight and narrow. But well, the straight and narrow is where balance is. Mm-hmm. So you know, religion can be a good thing to start with, but you can also get lost in religion. You can worship the creation more than the creator. Uh, You can uh, look at the reflection and not see the actual person, you know. And that's how religion helped me a lot, but it hurt me a lot too. Because you can get caught up in this, like right now, what's going on in America in churches, it's very deceptive. You know, you can feel like you're right with God and you're right in your life just because you go to church and do religious acts. But you can be religious and have no power. You can be destructive. If your frequency is low, I've met people in church that were just dark. I mean, they were evil people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll meet them and, and, you know, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, you can look at Islam. You got people that strap bombs on and go blow up buildings, and, and that's a wrong interpretation of what Islam teaches. Right. It's it's out of balance. Mm-hmm. In the Christian religion, you had the, the you know they used to kill people for having birthmarks, or like Jacques de Molay was murdered by the Pope, and uh, the Pope. And the, uh, you know, he cursed the Pope. And uh, there's another person there that he cursed too, and he cursed the Catholic Church as he was dying in the fire. That's showing you how religion can go too far left. Mm-hmm. When you throw them people in the fire and burning them, or hanging them on a cross, accusing them of being witches, that's where religion, you know, is a double edged sword. It can do good, but you can destroy people with religion. And it happens every day. There's more wars than more people has died over religion than anything in this world. So the truth is not the truth is in religion, but it's not. You know, mm-hmm. it's the truth about myth, myth about truth. Uh, and that's where Freemasonry, the symbols and stuff in Freemasonry, helped me figure a lot of this stuff out. It's helped me uh, better myself and. And I'm able to get past the craziness of the spiritual realm that I opened myself up to. Or I don't know how it happened. Mm-hmm. But I've had psychic experiences where I would know things were going to happen before they happened. And I believe that really 
being psychic and knowing things, I believe that's our birthright. Mm -hmm. I believe a lot of this stuff that's demonized by religions and people is really what we're supposed, we're supposed to be able to know things before they happen, have intuition. You know, we're supposed to be able to lucid dream. We're supposed to be able to astral project, you know. And I've been able to do that, you know, in the past 10 years. You know, it's not all bad, but I've been able to astral project out of my body. And I've been able to fix problems in my dreams that's helped me in my business. I have dreamed about problems at work and fixed them in my dream. And then when I wake up the next day, have it play out during the day mm -hmm. in the physical realm. So I think, you know, we've all been shut down spiritually, in a sense, by religion. But we're a lot of these things that are demonized, you know, a lot of people say everything's in reverse, everything's upside down. That's the delusion. You know, if you try to reveal the truth to people, they won't receive it. They reject it before they even give it, give it any thought, you know, because they're programmed to believe that way, you know. Yeah. And, and I think, too, they, they instinctually realize the truth will set them free. And freedom is so frightening because you have to take personal responsibility when you're a free, you know. Otherwise, if you're enslaved, someone tells you what to think and what to do. Yes, that's what I'll say. The blame game. Mm -hmm. It's easy to blame people because this is what I believe in for me. is everything in my life, I created it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know it. And I believe when I was having those episodes of sleep paralysis and I was seeing those spirits, the dark energy, I believe that was the universe showing me how far off I was mm -hmm. and that I was doing it. I was creating this. I believe that we create everything. And to much who is given, much is required. And when you're given knowledge like this, you know, when you read in Freemasonry, you'll come across terms and Albert Pike's writings where he talks about the profane and the chosen, the elect and the profane. And a lot of people think, well, they call them this profane. It's not like that. Uh, the, the way he wrote about it was there are profane people in this world they're in religion. They're everywhere you go. And everywhere you go in this world, you can find good people. You'll find the chosen. You know, the uninitiated. It's hard to get initiated into these mystery schools. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. Even and free, Freemasonry is not the only mystery school that you can hook yourself up with. Right. You know. You, there's many orders in this world mm -hmm. and, and they all teach the same thing you know just higher knowledge you know and even in religion you have the prescription for life you know if you've done the things that Jesus said you should do you're going to reap good benefits from it mm -hmm. and just like in Islam the at the core of every religion there if you take all the religions and put them together, you're gonna and start looking at all the similarities and glean all the similarities instead of the division. I think the church being divided against itself and religions being divided against itself. I think that's what's evil in this world. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people argue that without religion, without some spirituality per se, you know, in the form of religion that we would be devoid of morals and there would be chaos. How do you feel about that? Do you think that religion provides morality or is that something that is innate within us? I, I believe we're born <clears throat> with a conscience. 
but some people can't you know I believe that religion had to be put in place to police people because people can be so evil Manly Palmer Hall once said in one of his lectures he said that and he was a Rosicrucian and a Freemason 33rd degree Mason he said that it was possible for 50 billion people could live on this planet and live in peace mm -hmm. but he said it probably would never happen you know um, people can be so selfish you know and, and I believe that all the bad things that are happening in this world and that will happen uh, is because of selfishness you know uh, when a person is selfish they violate, violate natural law and all religion is is a mirror of something spiritual that's real. Religion is like truth, but it's not truth. Right. It's like it, but it's not the thing. And religion is mirroring what I believe to be, excuse me, natural law. Because natural law under divine providence is like a machine. You know, they say God has no respect for persons. He'll bless you just like he'll bless me. But he'll also, the flip side of that is, is under natural law, you know, it don't care who you are. It don't care mm -hmm. if you're a Freemason or a president. If you do things against, uh, that violates natural law, then you will suffer, mm -hmm. you know. And it's, it's a rabbit hole to go down in in your mind because people like to look at things, you know. Well, I'll just say this prayer and I'll be good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or I can get forgiveness for this Sunday and everything will be good. If that's not what religion was designed for, is not to give you a free pass. But uh, I mean, in my opinion and what I have seen and what I experience in life, religion is a social construct mm -hmm. that is designed to govern people and to control and manipulate and reinforce a certain type of behavior. Yes. <clears throat> and while there are truths in religion, mm -hmm. religion itself is simply a governance mm -hmm. of, of weak-willed individuals. Yes. A lot of it is purely man-made. I mean, even the people who wrote the Bible were just men, mm -hmm. people like a, <clears throat> like me and you, you know. Because, uh, you know, the Native Americans, they didn't have churches and uh, stuff that they had to adhere to, right. you know, the religious system. But they lived in balance with nature. Right. They believed in animism, that everything had energy, everything had a purpose, and exactly. everything was important. And that's what we've got away from, you know. Right. We, if something were to happen and and we not, and we didn't have water and electricity pumped to us, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, we would all die <laughs> because we don't know how to live in this earth mm -hmm. we don't know how to live in balance with mother nature we don't mm -hmm. we don't even know what's going on around us anymore because we've gotten so hooked into this system uh, <clears throat> that's what we're gonna i believe that's the real second coming, the metaphor of Jesus coming back, you know, is not like religion teaches. Uh, Christ consciousness is going to have to come back. I mean, because people are starting to figure out that they've been lied to, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, well, it, it's starting to show. I, I respectfully am going to disagree with you. Okay. I think that people are so attached to their technologies, their okay. their little um, phones <laughs> that they really don't have an opinion about anything. They're, they're incapable of thinking and they're incapable of making choices because they are dependent. <clears throat> I mean, that's my opinion. I, I, I agree with you. So, you know, <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> I mean, everybody's looking down when they need to be looking up. <laughs> right, right. 
And I mean, <clears throat> what do you think? Getting back on on the subject of balance, how do you, how do you feel that that is to be obtained with within the bounds of religion or what people have available to them presently? Well, I believe you're always going to get what you put out. You know, your universe is always going to mirror back to you what's inside of you. Mm -hmm. See, religion tells you to find the Jesus in the sky. But the real Jesus was always inside of you to start with. You know, like in Freemasonry, you have 33 degrees in Freemasonry. where you have 33 vertebrae in, mm -hmm. your, in your body. You have 30, and them 33 vertebrae. And that's how, you know, things are so upside down. Real, uh, this system and this religion is teaching people to find truth somewhere where it's not. Right. <clears throat> but, you know, the metaphors are all there. You know, uh, when Moses was in the wilderness, he held a serpent up on a staff. And all the people in the story would look at this serpent and be healed. Mm-hmm. And, and then in the New Testament, you have Jesus talking about, he, he refers to that. He says, just like Moses lifted the serpent up in the wilderness, so must I be lifted up. And if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. But that serpent on the staff has always symbolized wisdom. Mm -hmm. And when you look at in ancient Egypt, it, like in Hin Hindus, you know, the, the third eye is always at the top of those 33 vertebrae, mm -hmm. you know, the staff. That is what the serpent on the staff is, is what I believe. So people are looking for truth in the church or up in the heavens, and the whole time the truth was inside of them. Mm -hmm. Even right. like Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within, you know. Right. So anytime you look for God outside of yourself, you're looking in the wrong place. Right. That's why religious people can chain you to a tree and set you on fire because their belief system was, was tainted from the start. You know, sometimes you have to forget everything that you've been taught and start over. And that's what I did when I got into the lodge and started studying this stuff, you know, I got to a place where I was like, you know, everything I've done up to this point is not working. So I'm going to trash all my old belief systems. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start with a new belief system. Mm -hmm. And so I, when I started studying, I, I just pretty much cleaned myself, emptied myself out, and started over. Mm -hmm. and, and was just open-minded. And I'm still doing that daily, on a day-to-day -day basis now. You know, something that I might believe might be true today, I might wake up tomorrow and realize, you know what, I was wrong about that. I need mm -hmm. to rethink that belief system. Right. Because, I mean, my motivation now is I want to, I know from being on the inside and, and you get into these type of things, you really see how messed up things really are mm -hmm. and it's scary and I want to leave something for my children you know I'm raising my granddaughter she's 20 months old I've never told her Jesus is coming back tomorrow because I used to walk around scared to death when I was a kid because I thought the world was going to end the next day my grandparents told me that you know mm -hmm. because they was told that you know that, you know I was raised in fear, and I don't want to raise my granddaughter to fear spiritual things and to think that, you know, the world's going to end tomorrow. Those mm -hmm. are just belief systems you don't want to give your children. Well, on top of that, as you have said earlier, you know, that the God or the good is is in us, so is the bad. We are you know where you have to find that balance and inside us is where there are answers and yes. is the truth 
and you you know you sounds like you want to convey that and it's positive that you need to teach the the young ones growing up that they are enough yeah. they don't need to depend on religion or when she gets older she doesn't need to depend on a relationship she is enough on her own exactly and that's important principle that you're trying to teach her. Yeah, and she's not broken. Mm -hmm. You're not lost. Because I've never been lost, even in my worst, lowest points in life. Mm -hmm. You know, I always had help spiritually, even when the whole church was against me. You know, thinking back, you know, I listened to my grandfather talking about Mahalia Lancaster, you know, they called her a witch. Mm -hmm. But when something bad would happen, that's to. where they ran to. <laughs> yeah, you right. know, there was a time and a place to when, you know, being psychic or being spiritual or being a witch was not evil. Right. Because these people, they were in tune, they were born naturally in tune with nature you know they knew that you if you went out there in the field and got this and mixed it with that that you could cure this ailment mm -hmm. well it, we went from having wise women to witches yeah. and wisdom being you know put down and attempted to be destroyed but that goes back to people not being in tune and balance correct exactly yeah well in closing I, I just want to thank you for coming and spending thank some time you. and talking with me about these things today is there anything that you wish to close with well I would I do want to say I appreciate it and I'm uh, like I said I want to leave I want to leave something for my children that's going to really help them. And I hate to see our youth going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, everything you need, you're born with it. You already have it. You already have the Jesus you're looking for is inside you. Mm -hmm. And you can tap into this anytime you want to. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not broken, you're not lost, you're complete. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what I'd like to leave people with. And that's that. a very positive message. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today on Talk Time. Today we were with uh, Mr. Stephen Morris, and I'm Suzanne Hubbard. And thank you for joining us. And come visit us next time.